we're going to talk about. The five daily disciplines for massive success in team building. Here are my specific numbers. I crunched these numbers last night, and I did a Facebook post of these. These numbers surprised me. And what I want you to take here is this isn't a braggadocious post or braggadocious information, but I want, to, I want to show you what's available out there outside of just the traditional model of real estate. That's what we're going to talk about, leverage today. And what team do you know in a traditional real estate model that's closing over a quarter billion dollars in real estate, over 400 units across nine states with zero liability and zero overhead? Can anybody name one outside of our EXP model? That's why you're here today, to learn a little bit something outside of the box. And so when we start, uh, uh, okay, when we look at the current statistics in the real estate community, they're actually shocking. And I'm gonna go through these because they're very important. We've got currently 1.3 million realtors in North America. Only 43,000 of those, 3.3%, are doing more than 25 units. So it begs the question, but before we dive into this leadership, uh, uh, leadership information and the disciplines, we've got to define a problem. Only 3.3% are doing more than 25 units. After, after four years, we've got an 87% mortality rate in folks' business who, who, join EXP, or who join the real estate community. 85% of agents have zero previous sales skills or persuasion skills. 80% of agents only ask for the close one time. 80% of agents do only one open house a month, the biggest lead generating activity that you can do for new agents. And of independent brokers, 96% of them fail within 10 years. That's because what? That's because the age, um, if you look at independent brokerages, most of the time the production comes from where? The rainmaker, the broker himself, okay? It's tough to be both broker and manager. And, and when I go back to that slide, what EXP has done, what we've been able to do from the operational standpoint is take that off of a team leader's plate. Here's what else we know. Agents who do more than five hours of prospecting per week make on average 200K per year. That's one hour a day. Three touches versus five touches, meaning if I got a lead and I reached out to them three times, called them, emailed them, texted them, versus five touches, I got a 40% better conversion ratio. And ultimately, here's, here's a, a, a statistic that should astound you. Only a, a quarter of sellers used the same agent that they used to buy the house. So what does that tell you? It tells you we've got a lot of holes in our industry, doesn't it? Shake your head, yes. Okay, so where's the opportunity? We look, come on. Okay, so here's what we know. Just a, a, a few tools and tactics here. What we know is real estate is about three things. A, time and schedule. Ask yourself on a scale of one to 10, how's my time and how's my schedule look? Two, marketing versus prospecting. You gotta be prospecting based. 86% of business in our industry comes from referral from relationships. Marketing versus prospecting. A lot of you guys come from a retail background and you try to overlay the things that work in selling a product like you would in selling a service. Does that make sense? Okay, so you gotta think differently. You're, you're a service provider. Service providers get business through relationships, through networking groups. That's what the statistics say. And then, and then B, uh, we got two A's here, bad typo. But um, C is database management. So we've gotta be using a CRM tool and the statistics say that only about 3% of agents have a CRM that's, that's rapidly available to them. What you should think about your database as your own internal referral network. Okay, let's keep going. So if you looked back to 2020 and 2021, what, we, what we'd like to see is some confidence and some courage to take massive action throughout the rest of 2022. And that's what we're gonna talk about. What does it look like to have swagger when you're meeting with a, when you're going to a listing appointment or meeting with a buyer at a, at a consultation? 
What's your routine look like? If I ask you today from your business, how many touches are going out to the world? What's a touch? Interaction. Let's get, let's get uh, uh, granular on that. Email. What else? Text. Keep going. Phone call. Postcard. Pop by. All of those things. So what you, you, you need to break it down for the rest of 22. If you're going to take massive action, what does your touches look like every day? And then the, the, the truth is, based on the statistics, too many talented people underperformed in 2021 coming out of COVID. Only 3.3% did more than 25 deals. It's tough to live uh, in most marketplaces doing less than that after taxes and splits and costs, et cetera. So what I'll ask you is this, rhetorical question, did you underperform your potential in 2021? And I'd like you to score your business on a scale of one to 10. That hedge between what your number looks like and 10 is how much more potential you have inside of you. Disciplines. Okay, show me your disciplines, I'll predict your results. Your disciplines are time, business, schedule, your health, and your prospecting routine. So as you think about the rest of 22 and 20 uh, and 2023 and you put that plans together, that plan together, we're going to talk about these specific disciplines. Oh, we got to go. One next slide, next slide. Thanks, Rob. So number 1, study the market. This needs to be a daily routine that you employ and that looks like understanding what the hot sheets are and the predictive numbers, what the interest rates are and how they're affecting um, how, affecting, how they're affecting the industry. We are seeing a little bu pump of the brakes in Sacramento right now in the mid-range. If you understand what's happening in America right now, we're being separated into lower income and higher income. And if you think about business, the same thing happens. Everybody in the middle gets killed. You got Taco Bell, who's doing great, who sells a, a, a product at a low cost. And you got Chipotle, who sells at a high cost. Eight bucks for a burrito at Chipotle, $1.25 at, at Taco Bell. Who's in the middle? Mom and pop. They're getting killed. So think about that in relation to price point. What's the mid-range price point? In Sacramento right now, those houses that are priced between six fifty dollars and eight fifty, dollars 900000 the, the days on market are extending. So by knowing the market, we can have the conversations with our seller. Hey, days on market's gonna be a little bit longer right now. List price versus sales price is gonna be a little bit lower than what we've seen. Hey, you might not get that rent back. Hey, we might not get three or four offers right now. You need to be having these conversations so that you're the ultimate professional through your knowledge of the market. So I, I don't see enough of us exposing the narrative of what's happening on a routine basis with the market to our sphere of influence. I ask always the question of my coaching students, how influential are you over your sphere? When they think of real estate, do they think of you? If not, it's probably because you're not exposing them to the narrative of what's happening in the market. You're letting somebody else create that narrative for you, most of the time the media. So this needs to be something that you do on a routine basis. Understand neighborhoods, what's selling, what's expiring, what's reducing. This creates confidence, this creates knowledge, and you become ultimately the market expert. So, here, the question was, how much inventory in the United States do we have on the market right now? Well, here's a graph. Across all of the United States, we only have quarter million, a quarter million listings on the market right now. Look at, the, look at the inventory back from, what, 2015. How does this affect your marketing strategy? Oh, thanks. How does this affect your marketing strategy? Well, what, it sh what you should know is, man, I've got, out of 1.2 million real estates, I've got less chance of closing units than I have had in the past seven years. The market is hot, yes. Everybody's going after that, li that listing. I went on three listing appointments last week, and two of them said, I will do the listing for a half a percent, and one said, I'll do it for 1%. That's what you're going to be battling. That's why it's important to understand and know the market. Know the numbers. Take these statistics with you. Where's the room for opportunity? Where's the room for pain? Oh, okay. So this is what we call follow-up zero. And I'm going to run through these because I'm, I'm almost out of time here. But when, when, we, when you look at your nurtures, it's a new term in real estate. Basically, if we took those touches and then those touches lead to contacts, people who are reaching out and those contacts lead to leads, and leads lead to nurture, which ultimately lead to appointments, your inbox better have zero every day. 
It's imperative that you follow up, that you follow up seven times with each, with each of these leads. And ultimately, what we have as a value proposition these days is client satisf uh, satisfaction. Basically, I'm saying if you tell somebody you're going to call them on Tuesday, you sure as hell better call them. And your inbox better not have any nurtures left at the end of the day. So follow up zero with these. Document your day. Yes, share your day on Instagram. Share your day on Facebook. What's the number one type of reality show on cable TV? Real estate. Flip this house. Million dollar listing. Property brothers. You name it right? They want to see what, I don't know what's happening with the mic, but they want to see what's happening in your everyday life. I'm going on a listing appointment. Uh, I just showed buyers, showed buyers these properties. I, I'm in an affluent neighborhood. You have to share, you have to expose, you have to create content, you have to be influential, you got to be passionate about this business. So document your day. What happens with these when your follow-up is zero and when you know the market and when you're documenting the day, what does your team think you're doing? You're providing leadership to them. You're giving them a path. And I'm almost out of time here. Next slide. Make your calls. Ultimately, the, the nature of this slide is two things. Your business has two components. Innovation. What are you doing differently than your competition? And marketing and prospecting. And we gotta be prospecting based. I'm driving down the 101. And I see Banana Republic Chino sign. And you go, oh, I love Chinos. Is that getting you into the store? If, if I call you and I say, Jeb, hey, man, Sean from Banana Republic, I got two, two pairs of your, your size, uh, you know, 30, 32 Chinos. And they're half off. When are you coming in? Is that getting me into the store? Say yes. That's the difference between marketing and prospecting. Okay. And then ultimately, new agents, we're in a 90-day cycle. Those measures that you're, com that you're doing now, those things, those touches that are being sent out into the marketplace now aren't going to show up for 90 days. So you have to implement this thing we call a sales cycle into your business. And I'd be happy to talk about that you know, one-on-one -on -one later. But ultimately, we crush every day. Three hours of calls or pop buys or whatever it is you do to, to prospect Two appointments scheduled a day, and I'm going on one because we know half of them end up canceling on us. Five, invest 30 minutes on education. You are the market expert. You sure as heck need to understand what's happening in the stock market and the bond market and tax rules, 1031 exchanges, what the leadership plan looks like for you and your organization, and, and many of the other things that are on here. And... What are, so as we look at these five items and you look at building a team in an organization, these must be implemented for you to grow and build and succeed. I see all the time people want to build teams because they think they're salespeople. Salespeople are not empirically great leaders. They're two different dynamics. Does that make sense? So we, you've got to invest in the growth. And as I circle back around to, the, to, to how we succeed with this, Ultimately, what this slide says is there has to be um, a very uh, a tactical game board for you that says either I won today or I lost today. If my goal was to create five new contacts every day, did I do that? Yes or no? And every day you're checking that box and checking in with your accountability partners and your people because this is what your team is going to expect from you. Yes or no? Yeah. Okay. So as I wrap up and make the introduction for Matthew here, what I'll say is you're going to be shared with an opportunity today. I'm not a smart guy. I'm just gritty. In fact, I didn't even graduate, uh, graduate college. I got my AA degree and went in the Navy for six years. But the thing about it is in this industry, you got to have some grit and you got to want to grow. And again, I go back here, I'm not a smart guy, but when I got into this industry, I didn't realize the opportunities that were going to convey. Being a speaker, being a coach, being a team leader, building an organization. We're gonna roll in um, a team of 50 from Panama this year. Who the hell would have thought when I got into the industry in 2004 that I'd have an international business in real estate? This is the opportunity that's gonna be presented to you today. All I would ask is that you keep the door open for ideas and a new model.
Okay? That's all I got.